Hello, and welcome to another session on using the new Blender for video editing. Today we're going to talk about scenes, but, but not too much, because I've already created another video for the old Blender version 2.79, and I go into lots of detail about all the different things you can do with scenes, and it pretty much everything I said in there still applies to the new version. Uh, so today I just wanted to show you how you can go about creating new scenes and a few things that have changed since I recorded that last one. And that was number 31. Uh, there should be a little uh, link somewhere in the video that you can click on to watch that if you want to. So let's start by opening up a uh, video editing uh, layout. A scene is essentially a container for your work. So all of the clips that you put into the video sequence editor uh, all of the manipulations you've done, um, and in addition to that, if we if I open up, expand the properties section here, the things relating to your final output, the resolution of your your final video, the the length of it, the frame rate, that's all part of the scene. So let's start by talking about um, what's new with the new Blender version uh, 2.92. Uh, so first off, it would be how things uh, are affected when you import your uh, media uh, into your scene. If I scroll back up to here, you can see we've got our dimensions set to standard 1080, so 1920 by 1080. Now watch what happens when I import a video. So I go to Add, Movie, and I'm going to pick this video, which is, um, it's not 1080, it's in fact half of that. So I'll click on Add Now, and then I'll drag this out, and I'll scroll down here, and go to Source, scroll down, and you can see there it is. The resolution is 960 by 540. That's exactly half of our scene resolution of 1920 by 1080. Now, the interesting thing is with this new version of Blender, they've changed how imports work. If I scroll up now to transform, you'll see here we now have this scale X and scale Y. It's set to 2. So anytime you import something, Blender will automatically calculate how, uh, what kind of scaling it should apply to that video so that it fits within the dimensions of the scene you had set up and still maintain the aspect ratio of your source video. Uh, on the flip side, let me import another video which is larger than the uh, scene settings. So I have this 4K video here, I'll add. And let me just jump ahead again so you can, a bit so you can see what it is. So this is a, a very colorful high res video. And if I scroll down, to the bottom under source, you can see there it is 3840 by 2160. And if I go back up to scale, you can see it's uh, using a scaling of 0.5 on the X and Y, uh, meaning it's it made it uh, half. Okay, so with that aside, let's talk about working with scenes now. Uh, so everything to do with scenes you can access from this top section over here. So you click on this thing and it'll give you a listing of all of the scenes you have right now. By default, uh, when you first start a Blender project, there's only the one and it's called Scene. This uh, text field in here, you can click on that to change the names of your scenes if you wanted to. Or I'm not going to do that right now. And then over here, we have a button that we can click on and then it gives us options on how we can create new scenes. So the first option, new, it creates a new scene using all the default settings. So uh, by default, uh, for example, resolution is 1920 by 1080 with 250 frames. So if I were to click on this and go to new, I'll get exactly the same thing. And every time you create a new scene, if there was already a scene called scene, then it'll add a number to the end, like it, it does here, scene.001. And now that we have more than one scene, now this one is available to us, we can click on that to delete a scene. Let me go ahead and do that now, uh, just to show you that, yes, it's possible, it doesn't prompt you, and now you're looking at it and say, oh man, I made a mistake, how do I go back? 
no problem. You just press Control Z. Uh, there's no option from here, but I can press Control Z and it will be restored. There you go. Okay, so uh, next up is uh, the copy settings. So like it sounds, it'll copy all the settings. So uh, if, for example, if I had used something besides the standard 1920 by 1080, like if I had changed this to 640 by 480, then I go here and I say copy settings, the new scene will have those dimensions plus whatever other settings I had put in. Uh, but no, that's, that's just the settings not the content. So now the video sequence editor is completely empty. That's where the other final option comes in. Let me click on this to go back to the original scene with content. And I'll click here again. And I'm going to skip over this entirely. Uh, I have never seen a reason to use it. And so the only things I ever recommend to use is, is new copy settings and this final one full copy, which does as it sounds. You click on it, it creates a new scene, totally straight copy of everything you had done in that scene. So that's it. And the last thing to talk about is that about working with scenes is that you can name them. So I can call this, you know, my copy of scene if I wanted to. And it, and it is definitely handy to do that. If you start working with scenes, then having proper names for them really does help. All right, so that's an uh, intro about scenes. Uh, again, the other video has a lot more content. Before we go, there's two things I wanted to talk about. The first is a follow-up to my last video about how to use the speed control effects strip. In that video, I had shown how to use the speed control effects strip, but noted that it was kind of tricky and awkward to cut it. It's so, and the trick, the solution to that would be to use scenes. So let me go ahead and open up this file. Okay, so you can see here I have uh, these two videos here. So this one is the original video strip. This one is actually that same thing at, at uh, double the frame rate. So it actually stops here. I extended it out and then added a speed control effect strip so that if I stack one on top of the other, it'll look like basically the same thing. But cutting it is diff difficult. And again, the way to do it then is to create a new scene. So uh, I don't need to take the contents of this. I'm going to take this scene and I'll just say copy the settings. So I have the same frame rate, the same resolution. And then from here, I can add that scene in. So I go to add scene and I'll bring in that scene. And right now it's just a gray box. What we need to do is go into the properties of this strip and change the input from camera to sequencer. Once we do that, then now we can see all of the work we had done in the original scene and we can make cuts to it. So I can do a cut here. I can do a cut here. I can do a cut here and delete that and maybe rearrange these. I'll bring this one over here and that one over there. And if I just scrub across, you'll see, there we go. So that's how you can easily um, cut any videos, any strips that you've applied the speed control effect strip to. The last thing I want to tell you is that uh, in past versions of Blender, there was this problem with animations, with keyframes, where the um, the keyframe locations were were not localized. So for example, if you had set uh, a keyframe at frame 100 and then frame 200 in your, in your scene, and then you imported that scene into a larger scene and you had imported it not at the beginning, the, the animation wouldn't play properly. But they've corrected that in these later versions of Blender, which is a real big plus so now you can do all of your animations in whichever scene you want and then combine everything together. It'll work as expected. Okay, so, so that's it. Um, hope, you, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a like and subscribe so you can see more content when it comes. Thanks and bye now.